What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Kangas, and today's video will be our guide to Vex the Gloomist. Vex has been out on PBE for quite a bit now, and we've been grinding away, testing things out so that you don't have to. In this video, we're going to cover her abilities, how she works, and of course, all of the build paths. And I do want to note that some people have been trying to make Vex work as a support, but in all of our testing, unfortunately, she's more suitable to being a mid laner. You can always make Vex support work, but if you have to make something work, there's usually other options that either do it better or more consistently. So from here on out, this info is aimed specifically at Vex mid. And remember that since this is all based on info from the PBE, it's still tentative, but she should be in a similar state on release once she comes out. Now, in case you aren't familiar with Vex's kit, we'll start out by talking about what she does. Her passive is Doom and Gloom. The first part about this passive causes Vex to periodically gain Doom, a buff that causes her next basic ability to knock down and fear all enemies hit. The duration of the fear scales with levels, and while feared, the enemies are slowed based on their initial distance from Vex. The second part of the passive causes nearby enemies that dash, blink, or get hit by her E to be marked with Gloom for 6 seconds. Vex's next basic attack, Q or W against a marked target will consume the mark to deal bonus damage and then refund 25% of Doom's cooldown. If Vex uses a basic attack to trigger this mark, it becomes a non-projectile, meaning that he cannot be blocked by Windwall or other similar abilities. Also when attacking non-champions, Gloom does less damage and refunds 10% of Doom's cooldown. Her Q is Mistral Bolt. Vex launches a wave of mist in the target direction, dealing magic damage to enemies that it passes through. This skill shot starts out slow and wide, but after traveling 500 units, it gets much faster and narrows in width. Kinda cool and unique. W is Personal Space, where Vex emits a shockwave around herself, gaining a shield and dealing damage to all nearby enemies. Her E is Looming Darkness, where she commands a shadow to move to the target location, increasing the radius of the area as it travels. Upon arrival, Shadow deals magic damage to all nearby enemies and slows them for 2 seconds. And her R is Shadow Surge, where Vex launches shadows in the target direction, granting sight in the area along the path and dealing magic damage to all enemies hit. Shadow stops upon colliding with an enemy champion, marking them for 4 seconds and revealing them for the duration. Shadow Surge can be recast as long as the target is marked. Upon recasting, Shadow pulls Vex towards the marked target with displacement immunity, dealing damage and consuming the mark once she arrives. If the marked target dies within 6 seconds of being hit by Shadow Surge, Vex can cast it again with no mana cost for the next 12 seconds. That's right, we got another resetting ultimate on a death. It's kinda been a trend lately. But with that out of the way, let's do a quick kit summary for Vex. Vex is technically classified as a burst mage, but with her kit giving her the ability to dash into opponents and blow them up from close range, she's definitely what we would call a battle mage. But that isn't to say that she's a bruiser. Yeah, she can get up close and personal, but she's not meant to face tank a ton of damage. You want to get in, use your W shield to mitigate some damage, and blow up your enemies before they can kill you. She does have a bit of poke damage with her Q, but most of the time you're looking to burst down bad guys. Vex is probably going to start out with a negative win rate when she's finally out on the live servers, but don't let that discourage you. Pretty much every champ goes through that when they first come out, and once people get past that learning curve, they end up being somewhere between pretty strong and really OP. Personally, I think Vex is a champ that pushes to the OP side of things and will be a really dominant pick once people catch up on what she's really capable of. But if you want to be one of the first people that gets good at Vex, this guide is a great starter to put you ahead of the curve, but of course, if you want to be a true master, I highly recommend that you head over to ProGuides.com. Our challenger level coaches can teach you all you need to know in every detail, and a lot of them have been grinding her on the PvE as well, so they're going to be ahead of the curve too. They're available 24-7, so it's never a bad time to come and try one out. But for now, let's talk about how to actually play her starting with the early game. Many mages have struggled for pretty much this entire season due to them struggling against the mobile bruisers and assassins that dominate mid lane. But Vex is pretty much perfectly built to deal with those threats. The key to this is the doom portion of her passive. The ability to fear an aggressive opponent not only allows you to get some distance between the two of you, but also sets you up to land her hard hitting combos. Any of her basic spells can proc this, but when you're dealing with a dangerous opponent, especially a mobile one that can dash or blink to dodge a skill shot, the best thing to do is wait for them to make the first move. When they go in, you simply use your W. This is the most foolproof way to fear an opponent since it's a near instant cast in a decent big circle around Vex. Then you just combo E and Q and back off until you have your W again. 
Since you rely heavily on your fear to disengage scary opponents, you want to be mindful of how you're farming the minion wave. If you're just spamming Q to shove, you'll then end up wasting your fear on a minion wave, and that is not ideal. Against less dangerous opponents like other mages, you'll rarely be in range to use your W unless you're ulting in. So when you have your fear up against them, you'll want to lead with your E, since Q is a pretty telegraphed ability. After landing E, Q and make sure to move up and use your gloom empowered auto against them to proc electrocute. But regardless of what you're laning against, once you reach level 6, you have a lot of kill potential. Start by trading with them a couple of times to soften them up, and then you'll look for an all-in after. Vex's ult can be pretty hard to hit on its own, so try and use it after hitting your fear. You could try to fear by landing your E, but if you're confident that you have the damage to kill your opponent, a guaranteed way to land everything is to lead with a flash W and then quickly ult an E at the same time while they're feared. You don't want to use your Q right away when you do this combo, that's because in the early game, the fear is a pretty short duration and your opponent may be able to flash out of it. Instead, use the second part of your ult and then use your Q. Using it at melee range causes it to instantly do damage, so this guarantees your hardest hitting spells will land on your opponent. But once you get to the mid to late game stages of the game, Vex is a surprisingly well-rounded champ that brings a lot to a team comp. Most bursty battle majors don't really have safe wave clear, and even if they do have AoE damage, they have to get pretty close to use it. But Vex is able to nuke waves safely from a pretty good distance with her Q and E. When it comes to CGing, she's kind of similar to Lux, because she's got good poke via Q, and if you land CC on a squishy opponent, you can probably burst them down in a single combo. But CGing is not your main goal as Vex. You want to be doing one of two things, either going for picks on squishy targets, or blowing up the entire enemy team in teamfights. For assassinating lone squishies, most burst majors rely on some sort of a mistake on the enemy's part, either they overextend while farming a side lane, or you sit in a brush and they face check you. Those things certainly work for Vex, but what she has over other champions in her class is her potential kill range. Vex's ult has between 2 and 3 thousand range depending on the rank, so if you can snipe an opponent with it, you can fly in and land your combo to instantly kill them. When somebody knows Vex is there, dodging the ult is pretty easy, but when it comes to flying in from off screen out of the fog of war, that can be pretty hard to react to. This makes it fairly easy to get consistent picks with this pick. And when it's time to teamfight, you want to be pretty conscious of your cooldowns. Of course, there will be exceptions, but generally speaking, you'll always want to have your W and your fear available before flying into the enemy team. And for that same reason, you don't always have to chain your ults right away. Remember that you have a full 12 seconds window to use your next ult if you get the reset. So sometimes it's worth waiting a few extra seconds for your cooldowns to come back up. And one last tip is that Vex's ult is considered a really fast dash, kind of like a Kali Z. It makes her immune to displacement, so she can't be knocked out of it, so it's really useful as a means to buffer incoming CC. That said, she's not untargetable, so you can still take damage and be killed while using it. Now to finish things off, let's take a look at the runes that you should be running and the items that you'll want to build. For runes, you'll run Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Conditioning, and Overgrowth, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resist. For secondary runes, you could optionally go for Transcendence and Gathering Storm for huge scaling power, but in general, I recommend the Resolve Tree because Vex is all about getting into the fray, and those runes just help out a lot with the teamfight survivability. For your items, you'll start with a Doran's Ring and then build a Deludin's Tempest and Sork Shoes. After that, go Horizon Focus and either Cosmic Drive or Zoni's Hourglass. After that, you'll want Void Staff and Rabidon's Deathcap. Vex's item build is pretty strict, so we recommend that you pretty much always stick to this exact build. The reason is that a lot of Vex's power in fights comes from getting ult resets. If you don't have the damage to burst somebody down, odds are you're just gonna ult in and get popped. The one part that is optional, though, is whether to go Cosmic Drive or Zonia's Hourglass. Since you don't get ability haste anywhere else in the build aside from your mythic, Cosmic Drive giving you 40 is huge. Also, aside from her ult, Vex has no mobility, so the extra movement speed it gives is pretty nice. For that reason, it's definitely my preferred default item, but hey, you can go Zonia's when it's absolutely necessary dealing with comps where ulting in would be really risky. And there is one alternative build that you can go for, but you'll only do it when you're against a very tanky enemy team comp, one that has at least three tanks, juggernauts, or HP heavy bruisers. In that case, your rune page is Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or MR. For items here, you'll go Leandri's, Sork Shoes, Cosmic Drive, Demonic Embrace, Void Staff, and Rabidons. Since you won't be one-shotting people with your combo, this build emphasizes damage over time with the lower cooldowns and burn damage that you can utilize. 
And that wraps things up for our guide to Vex, the Gloomist. She's a nice addition to the mage lineup since she works more like a bursty battle mage rather than a control mage that tend to be a bit stale when they're in the meta. She will have a bit of a learning curve, so don't expect her to have crazy stats when she comes out, but I promise she is worth putting some effort to learn. And one last thing before you go, I want to remind everybody to go check out our community Discord if you haven't already. We'd love to have you come join us in our conversations. That's it for today, so best of luck on the Rift, everybody. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one.